Hey folks, it's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. I want to go ahead and share an experience with you guys that I had this past weekend. I shot a nice eight point with my bow this past weekend, but unfortunately did not recover him. What I'm doing in this video is hoping that I can share some of the knowledge that I have learned since this experience with you guys so that you don't have the same issues when you're out in the woods on future hunts. I do ask that you guys watch the entire video before you make any comments. I have a strange feeling that your original opinion of my shot is going to change when you end up seeing some of the slow motion video that I'm going to show you guys. Ended up going out this past Sunday at about 7.45, it was a real cold morning. Um, I was sitting at a place that's down in the bottom of a valley. Really didn't see much the beginning of the morning. Had some birds underneath me rustling through the leaves and the next thing I know I hear a sound behind me that's definitely not a bird. Uh, I turned around in the stand, it's like three trunks of a huge pine that we have a ladder stand in. And about 70 yards away, I see that there's a buck making a scrape. Uh, I can tell it's a buck, I can see antlers, but I can't tell how big because of how thick the brush is back there. So I went ahead and I got my camera turned around, uh, facing it towards the direction I have a shooting lane. And about 10 seconds later, he walked right through the shooting lane. I got a real good idea how big he was. I knew immediately that it was a buck that I was going to shoot. I turned my main camera down to a little grassy field in front of me. I stood up, I got my bow ready, I got my rangefinder in front of me, and I waited for him to walk around the edge of that huge stem. As he walked out, he stopped real briefly, and it gave me the opportunity to go ahead and range him. It was 33 yards, and he was still behind some trees and brush, so I couldn't take a shot. Then he stepped out into the opening and he started to slowly walk across this opening. Because I had just ranged him, I knew what pin I was going to use. I went ahead, I pulled back my bow, and as I did, I aimed right at his front brisket, knowing that the slow walk that he had, I was going to anticipate one full step. I was totally comfortable, totally relaxed, had the pin exactly where I want it. I went ahead, released, took my shot, felt good about the shot, and it happened so fast that when the shot hit him, it hit him just below the spine quite a ways back. I didn't know what to do. I, immediately, I was frustrated. I felt sick. I practiced all year long. The last thing that I want to do is wound a deer. Fortunately, he went down right away, and I assumed that I spined him. Uh, he's laying there. He's got his butt to me, his head downhill and I knocked another arrow up right away hoping to get a second shot to be able to finish him quickly and I had no shot. So I watched him for about a minute and as I watched him he did not move. He was laying there with his head up and absolutely not moving an inch. Again I assumed I spined him and I decided after about a minute that I was going to get down and I was going to try and get in a position to take a second shot. And you'll see in the video that my camera just kind of moves a little bit and it was me just taking a step towards the front of my stand to get ready to get down and take that second shot and no sooner did that happen yeah you're seeing it he got up and ran away i, I didn't know what to do I, I watched him run away in complete disbelief knowing that i was just so super excited that i got a buck although the shot was not ideal. And then all of a sudden he was gone and he was sprinting and he was running away and I knew where the arrow was, I was not gonna find blood. So I just kind of sat there in the stand and I spend all this time in the woods, you do all this preparation during the season, you get out there in the field and uh, passed up some buck this year I had some other buck that were definitely shooters that just weren't ideal or ethical shots that I passed on. And uh, shot a doe last weekend, which was great, put some meat in the freezer. But this was it, man. This was the shot that I was waiting for all year long. And um, I was absolutely, totally, and completely disappointed with myself. You know, what did I do? I, did I pull the shot? Did I try to peek? I, I couldn't figure it out at the time because it happened so quickly like it always does with most, most buck that are coming in. So I sat there for about 10 or 15 minutes and um, decided that I was going to get out and take a look at the area where I shot him, which I did. Um, I texted my buddy Steve, who owns the property. 
uh, took all my stuff uh, back to the buggy, headed back to the farm and just relaxed for a couple hours, trying to give him a little bit of time just in case um, he was wounded enough that he was gonna bleed out. So I went back in and uh, found only two spots of blood where I had shot him. And as I walked across the grassy field to the direction in the woods where he had run, I could find absolutely nothing. So after about 10 minutes of finding nothing, I walked into the woods and immediately found scuff marks in the dry leaves where he had run away. Fortunately, it was a really dry day and it was easy to see him running through the open hardwoods on these dry leaves that were kicked up. I got about 50 yards into the woods and I found my arrow. About three to four inches of it was broken off, so I assumed that was still in um, the meat just underneath the spine because I think I hit him in that no man's land just below the spine and just above the body cavity. And I proceeded over the next three hours to track him almost 700 yards with absolutely zero blood. Believe it or not, this guy stayed on a logging trail that paralleled a, screen, a stream going downhill for the entire 650 to 700 yards. Took a lot of time, um, wasn't a rush, had my bow ready in case I kicked him up. I kept looking through my binoculars and um, every track that I saw, he was still moving, he was still trucking. So finally I got in an area that was brushy and grassy. Um, I lost the trail. I had texted a couple buddies back and forth and uh, shown them the video and all of us kind of came to the same conclusion that it most likely was not a fatal hit. There's a real good chance that he will survive because of where the um, blade and the broken part of the arrow lodged. But still, it's I've hunted all my life and I don't really love to kill things but I love archery and I love deep venison. And the last thing that I want to do is wound an animal. So I ended the search after about three hours. I went home, grabbed something to eat, and um, I just couldn't shake it. You know, I just was disappointed in myself. So I uploaded stuff onto my computer from my camera and I started to watch it over and over again. And, like I said, it happens so quick you're in the field that without having video, you, you know, you really try to replay it in your mind and you can't remember everything. So I went back and I started watching it real close and I started to try to stop it frame by frame, but on the computer, it wouldn't really stop it frame by frame specific enough for me to really see what had occurred when that arrow was in that last five to 10 yards. So I got my iPhone out and I videotaped it and then I sat down and used the slider on the bottom of the camera and I was able to go specifically to frame by frame. And amazingly, the last five yards, not only did he tense his muscles and drop like four to five inches, but he also lurched his body forward about 10 inches. I took a good shot, I thought I did. You know, I'm watching that arrow, it's going right behind the shoulder. And when I was able to slow-mo it down frame by frame, I was able to tell that this buck at 33 yards jumped my, my string. He heard the bow. I don't know if he felt the arrow coming to him, but he reacted so quickly that that's why the shot was high and that's why the shot was so far back. Obviously, I'm still disappointed that I wounded a buck, but my confidence is still there that all the time that I spend practicing shooting all year long, my mechanics were right, my aiming was right, and it was just a matter of this buck trying to stay alive and reacting to something that he knew was not natural in the woods. I ended up getting on YouTube and watching a couple Bill Winky videos, and Bill was discussing uh, deer that string jump and he said he had had several experiences where he's had some real nice buck that did the same thing. And he said sometimes he was lucky enough to miss it clean and sometimes, you know, it was a shot that ended up somewhere in the deer where he had not expected. When Bill was talking about this, he was trying to explain that shooting at a deer is an inexact science. Unlike shooting at a stationary target, you don't know what that deer is going to do after you shoot. His advice is to shoot low. 
and one of two things are going to happen. Either the deer is not going to move and you're going to miss him cleanly underneath, which isn't going to wound him, or he's going to drop down into that arrow and you have a real good opportunity of still hitting the kill zone even though he's trying to jump the string. Uh, please don't be afraid to comment. Constructive criticism is great. Um, even if you don't agree with me, information that you tell me through your comments, I'm going to listen to and it's going to help me be a more competent and ethical hunter by learning from information from you guys that I may not have thought of on my own. As always, I try to tell real stories here. Um, none of this is made up. It's just an average hunter in the woods sharing his experiences and I hope it helped you guys. Good luck this season. I hope everybody has a safe and enjoyable hunting season. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Telling you guys to have a great day. See ya.